What's up guys, Zep from the Torpid Gaming Network here and today we're going to be setting up an encounter tracker to use while we stream D&D. So the tool we're using today is called Improved Initiative and I really like it because one, it's really easy to use and two, it has a bunch of really helpful features that I was using other programs to achieve. So let's set it up. Here we are at the homepage, improve-initiative.com. No nonsense, there's just one button right at the top, start an encounter, so that's what we're gonna hit. All right, here we are, we're at a blank slate, we have nothing saved. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create some player characters and then we're going to save three different encounters and then we're gonna show you how to back those encounters up and actually run them during your game. So let's build our characters first. It's right, over here in the character tab. We're not going to use the sample characters just because we want to add our own. We're going to add our own. We're going to call it Sunset Sprue. Hello, that's me. Uh, and what when I'm using this, I don't actually do portrait URL, source, or type, or level because our player characters, they're really just a placeholder for us so that we can track them in the initiative order. We don't really care about their hit class. I do actually care about their armor class because as you'll see later, you can reference it very easily. Uh, the initiative modifier, make sure to leave this at zero so that when uh, the tool is rolling initiative, we can actually override that without having to subtract or plus any modifiers that it adds because I really like it when our players roll their own dice. So we have our first character, we'll save it, and then we will make a new one. Pylos. Pylos is a rogue, a little bit less less hit points and sunsets brew, and we'll save. So now that we have our two characters, if you just select them, they're going to add them into the combatant field. This is perfect. And now, uh, improved initiative comes preloaded with a whole bunch of different monsters. There is enough in here that you can run run any encounter you want. And there are ways for importing custom monsters that we'll go over uh, after the tutorial is done. But um, for now, let's just do just some goblins. So search, so we're just gonna find some goblins. We'll do hobgoblin, a bugbear. So this is a pretty standard first level encounter. First level, pretty standard early game encounter. And so now that we have that we have this encounter made, and what you can see is that if you hover over each of the characters. All of their stats are gonna be here on on the right side. So this is super helpful. This means you don't have to go reference a book. You don't have to go looking on D&D Beyond. Everything that you need to run your encounter is gonna be right here on this page on the right side. So we'll come back to that. So we'll save this encounter over here on the encounter tab. You go to add new, we'll call it encounter one. Hit save. And then so now, if we, uh, if we have a clean slate, we hit encounter one and boom, our encounter is generated. Everything is there. We're ready to start combat. Hey guys, roll for initiative. And now when you say that, you go over here to this, this play icon, start encounter. And then so now it's gonna come up and give you rolls for initiative. It's gonna attempt to roll all of the initiative. And what I do is that I ask my players what they roll and I will override it here. So we'll say that, that Pylos rolled a 17 and you know, Sunset's Brew rolled a 12. So we're gonna override that, but we're gonna keep the rest of the initiative order because Improved Initiative knows what the goblins, hobgoblin, and the bugbears initiative rolls are supposed to be, and it's gonna roll those for you. You just hit the check mark. We're at the top of, top of the initiative order, and the highlighted name is gonna appear here on the left side. And to advance the initiative order, you, you just go down here, and you hit next turn. And so this is this is how you advance your initiative. And it goes down and easy as that. So then say that you want to uh, highlight somebody else, you just click their name and it comes up over here on the right side. One thing that I really, really love about improved initiative is that if somebody says, hey, I wanna cast Fireball and you don't know what Fireball does. It's really easy. If you click the little library button, it'll bring that library back up you just tab over to spells and you can quickly just search fireball and there it is. And as soon as you hit it, it's going to bring up fireballs. This is a really, really good resource to have as a DM for quick reference. So you can quickly and easily resolve 
questions, rule disputes, everything is all right here. And this is what I really, really love about this tool. Applying damage is really, really easy. You just highlight the health and then you just enter in how much damage is done. It'll automatically subtract when it goes down to zero, it'll turn red. Another really awesome feature is there's are these tags. So you can say if they are prone or blinded, and there's some really great auto features here so you can track any status ailments that are happening. That's gonna go on right here. It's So we have all of our encounters made. So now all we need to do is save our data so that we can easily import it back in because the free version of improved initiative does not support cloud backup. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over here to the gear. We're gonna go over to the account and we are going to export your user data as a JSON file. And that will spit out one file that will have everything that you have done so you can easily load it back in. And then just to load it back in, after you come back in a couple days or after your session, you wanna reload your data, you're gonna come back to this tab and go replace your user data by uploading a JSON file. And on top of that, it does have these kind of nifty features for import characters, stat blocks, and encounter and spells from a JSON file or import stat blocks and spells from a DD app file. So this is how you get all of your extra material from other source books. And to do that, uh, you just go on to the Improved Initiative Reddit. I'll, I'll link it in the description. And you just search for uh, stat blocks or D&D &D app files. You can find all of that stuff there. A couple notes, there is a $5 a month paid tier that will unlock a couple of really cool features. It'll give you access to a D&D &D Beyond stat block importer. So you can import any monster that you bought on D&D &D Beyond and also characters that you've made. It'll import straight into your improved initiative also unlocks cloud sync you can build encounters on your laptop and instantly get them on your desktop where you that's a super useful feature i'll put their patreon down in the description this is not an advertisement video in any way i wasn't paid to say that but it's a really really helpful feature i hope this tutorial was helpful for you i instantly fell in love with this program the moment that i used it so be sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and if you really like Improved Initiative or you use other, other ways of tracking your initiative, drop a comment and tell me about it. Again, I'm Zep. This is the Torpid Gaming Network.